Development of artificial intelligence is speeding up so quickly that it was addressed briefly at both political conventions, including the Democratic gathering this week. Of course, science fiction writers and movies have long theorized about the ways in which machines might one day usurp their human overlords. As the capabilities of modern artificial intelligence grow, Paul Salman looks at the existential threats some experts fear and that some see as hyperbole. From my perspective, there's inevitable doom at the end of this, where if you keep on making AI smarter and smarter, they will kill you. Kill you, me, and everyone, predicts Eliezer Yudkowsky, tech pundit and founder back in the year 2000 of a nonprofit now called the Machine Intelligence Research Institute to explore the uses of friendly AI. 24 years later? Do you think everybody's going to die in my lifetime, in your lifetime? I would wildly guess my lifetime and even your lifetime. Now, we've heard it before, as when the so-called godfather of AI, Jeffrey Hinton, warned Jeff Bennett last spring. The machines taking over is a threat for everybody. It's a threat for the Chinese and for the Americans and for the Europeans, just like a global nuclear war was. And more than a century ago, the Czech play RUR, Rossum's Universal Robots, from which the word robot comes, dramatized the warning. And since 1921, that's more than 100 years ago, people have been imagining that the robots will become sentient and destroy us. That's right. AI expert Stanford's Jerry Kaplan at Silicon Valley's Computer History Museum. That's created a whole mythology, which of course has played out in endless science fiction treatments. Like the Terminator series. A new order of intelligence decided our fate in a microsecond. Extermination. Judgment Day, forecast for 1997. But hey, that's Hollywood. And look on the bright side, no rebel robots or even hoverboards or flying cars yet. On the other hand, robots will be everywhere soon enough as mass production drives down their cost. So will they soon turn against us? I got news for you, there's no they there. They don't want anything, they don't need anything. We design and build these things to our own specifications. Now that's not to say we can't build some very dangerous machines and some very dangerous tools. Kaplan thinks what humans do with AI is much scarier than AI on its own. Create super viruses, mega drones, God knows what else. But who done it aside, the big question still is, will AI bring doomsday? I'd rate the existential threat of AI around a three or four out of 10. That's the avatar of LinkedIn founder Reid Hoffman, to which we fed the question, one being no threat, 10, extinction. What does the real Reid Hoffman say? I'm gonna go for two on that answer. I'm gonna tell you that your avatar said three to four. <laughs> All right, well, my avatar is trying to, to approximate something that uh, is what kind of, a, kind of a, a bulk of educated, reasonable people would want to hear. But hey, even if you told me there was only a one in 10 chance of a ticking time bomb in my room, I would be out of there. Yudkowsky started warning of rogue AI back in 2005. And since? Things have gone a bit worse than hoped for. And to be clear, the sting at the end of this is AI gets smarter than us, is poorly controlled, and probably humanity becomes collateral damage to its own expansion. What's the doomsday scenario here? It is smarter than humanity. From its perspective, it now wants to get independence of humanity. It doesn't want to be running on computers that require electricity that humans have to generate. There are many more AI companies now than just OpenAI. And some of the people there are explicitly like, yeah, sure, you know, like maybe it'll wipe out humanity. But, you know, I don't care about that. And of all the world's problems, tribalism, climate change, etc., you think AI is a bigger problem? I think climate change is unlikely to kill literally everyone, down to the last man, woman, and child. At all of the top three companies, I expect the leaders would prefer not to wipe out humanity, but as they see it, it's not up to them. They got to stay ahead of their competitors. So what does AI itself think? I asked Amica, a robot hooked up to ChatGPT. Destruction, one to 10? The response, a three. The potential for harmony and enhancement exists, but vigilance is paramount. Would you roll the dice on that? 
I'm afraid we're all going to be rolling the dice on that. And I'm worried that in your answer, you're saying there's something like a 30% chance that AI, artificial intelligence, will destroy humanity. Shouldn't I be scared? Your concern is valid, Paul. The 30% isn't a direct prediction, but a cautious nod to the uncertainties and ethical dilemmas of handling powerful technology. But I'm afraid that human beings may not be capable of protecting themselves from the risks of AI. That dread is profound. It's daunting, but not without hope. Humanity's resilience has often defied expectations. Perhaps it's no surprise that the actual human who created ChatGPT, Sam Altman, thinks the same. I believe that AI will be very net good, tremendously net good. Um, but I think like with any other tool, um, it'll be misused. Like you can do great things with a hammer and you can like kill people with a hammer. Um, I don't think that absolves us or you all or society from um, trying to mitigate the bad as much as we can and maximize the good. And Reid Hoffman thinks we can maximize the good. We have a portfolio of risks. We have climate change as a possibility. We have pandemic as a possibility. We have nuclear war as a possibility. We have asteroids as a possibility. We have human world war as a possibility. We have all of these existential risks. And you go, okay, AI, is it also an additional existential risk? And the answer is yes, potentially. But you look at its portfolio and say, what improves our overall portfolio? What reduces existential risk for humanity? And AI is one of the things that adds a lot in the positive column. So if you think, how do we prevent future natural or man-made pandemic? AI is the only way that I think can do that. And also, like, it might even help us with climate change things. So you go, okay, in the net portfolio, our existential risk may go down with AI. For the sake of us all, grown-ups, children, grandchildren, let's hope he's right. The PBS NewsHour in Silicon Valley, Paul Salman.